Hi guys, today we are going to be trying out a new collection from Yusei Beauty. I am so excited. You guys know I love the Impressionism palette with my whole entire heart. It is one of the best palettes in my collection. So when they come up with something new, I'm always super excited. And today we're going to test out the Rococo collection. <laughs> Probably butchering that, but I have a palette here as well as two cream blushes. This collection also comes with some liquid to matte eyeshadows. Um, I passed on those. I did get this sent in PR. They asked me what I wanted to receive and I said I didn't really care for those because it's not a product that I personally am going to use. So I didn't want them to send it to me just for me to use it once and never use it again. So if you're interested in something like that, maybe someone else who's gotten in PR will, uh, you know, show those, uh, but I'm not going to be showing you those in this video. But we're gonna be uh, doing a look with the palette as well as using some of the cream blushes. So let me just show you the, the products before we get into it. So let's start off with the palette. This is the Rococo palette, like I said, and it says on the back here that Rococo is an art movement characterized by opulence, the joy of living and pastel colors. Meet the Rococo palette, a versatile collection of pastel shimmers and mattes created for soft and romantic looks, perfect for both daily and editorial makeup looks. This 16 shade palette packed with pigment will have you embodying the romance and delight of the Rococo art movement. And I really think that the color story represents the era that they're going for. And even though even though this isn't my perfect color story, doesn't mean that I can't appreciate it for what it is. So I'm still, I'm very excited to be testing this out. There are a little bit too many neutral shimmers in this palette for my liking, but there's a lot of colorful mattes, which does make me excited. So very happy to be trying this out. I will say when I did swatch this palette that the swatches took a little, the mattes in particular took a little bit more building than what I'm used to with uh, Musée Beauty. So we'll see if that, you know, has anything to do with how they apply on the eyes or if they're going to be just as nice and pigmented as always. I never ever judge a eyeshadow based on the swatch because swatches don't mean anything, honestly. It's really just how they perform on the eyes that is going to be the true test. So let me show you the, uh, the cream blushes as well. So they have two blush duos. These are cream blushes, like I said, they're called the color wash blushes. The first one here is the exuberance and soft, and this is the darkest of the two. Uh, these are beautiful colors. This orange, so pretty, very excited about that. And then the other one is more of a kind of strawberry shade, I guess you would call it, also really, really pretty. And then the other one is called Youth and Play, and this is probably the one that I'm going to be using today. I do already have one of their cream blush duos and I really like it. I always forget to use cream blush, I can't help it. It's just one of those steps that, I just forget to do. So I'm excited to be using this again because it'll force me back into using more cream products. And I think I'm going to probably use the shade here called Youth. That's kind of like what's what's jumping out at me. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and start with applying this. I have not powdered my face. I just have foundation and concealer on. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go in with a brush because that is how I always apply cream products. I just like using a brush for everything. I can't help it. So I'm gonna use one from Made by Mitchell. It's just kind of a flat, I think it's a highlighting brush, but for me, it's just a little too big to be a highlighting brush. So I'm gonna use it for this. This is the number two brush, I think. So I'm just gonna kind of pick some up on my brush here that may be a little bit too much saying that I'm going in for more, but story of my life. So we're just gonna go ahead and apply this. So it's set on the back. You can apply this sheerly, or you can really build it up to be nice and pigmented. So I'm obviously gonna go very nice and pigmented because that is how I like my my blush. So this is really, really pretty. You can see just how well it is blending out. I am going to set this after though, because I need to powder my face. I really hate the feeling of anything that's not uh, like dry, I guess you could say on my face. Like I really hate the feeling of sticky things or just anything that's not been set, but that looks really, really pretty. That is actually beautiful. I really like that a lot. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this side as well. And then, like I said, I'm gonna powder my face, probably finish off with the rest of my face as well. And then we can get into trying out the eyeshadows, which I don't know what I wanna do today. Don't really have a plan. We are going out later and I think I'm probably just going to wear, probably just going to wear what I'm wearing. So maybe I'll do something that kind of goes with, with my shirt today. Maybe that is a good idea. I'm not going to put any of this on my nose. I don't really like having cream products on my nose because I do have very oily skin. So I'm gonna skip that step. I'm gonna go ahead and finish off with my face and I'll come back and we can do the eyeshadows. The face is done. So I did do some powder blush over the top because I just can't help myself. This is why I always forget to use cream blush because I'm always gonna go in with a powder blush after anyway. Uh, this is Sweet Tulip from Udensa. It's one of the kind of shimmery blushes. And I also use one of the highlighters from Udensa. I forget how beautiful this is. This is one of the mesmerizer ones. This is so pretty. I mean, look at this. This is the shade 
web of destiny. So that is how I decided to finish with my face. I'm going to start by priming my eyes with, of course, my Natasha Denona eyeshadow base. And then we can try out, where is my mirror? <laughs> Such a mess on my desk. You have no idea. Just be happy that you don't see this. <laughs> I'm not one of those people who like clean up after every time I, I film or do my makeup. I usually sit down and just like move things out of the way and be like, okay, that's good enough. <laughs> I mean, eventually I do have to clean up because it just gets out of hand, but today has not been one of those days. So it is a mess, but that's okay because I am a messy person and I'm proud of it. I have to admit, I am a bigger fan of the regular cardboard packaging over this one. I feel like this is a little bit, it's not bulky, but I just prefer like the slimmer ones. The ones that don't like come inside of a box. Like I don't mind this, but if I could choose, I definitely would prefer to just have the normal cardboard packaging. Uh, let's see, what do I want to do? So this color definitely matches my shirt perfectly. This would be really pretty as well. This one would look very good with my hair. Maybe I'll do something like these two colors in my crease and then we can do... See, I really wish that there were some more colorful shimmers in this. Like all of the shimmers except for really... This lavender one is pretty basic and neutral and like bronzy on that side. And I don't feel like those colors really go that well with the colorful shades. Maybe that is just me, but I do wish that there were just a couple more, maybe like a turquoise shimmer or something like that, because a lot of these, these four hair, they look very similar. So I'm kind of stumped because I don't really know what I want to do on my lid. Like I can figure out easily what to do in my crease because I have a lot of really beautiful matte options. But when it comes to my lid shades, I don't feel like a lot of these shimmers necessarily go with the matte. So yeah, we're going to have to just kind of wait and see. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, I'm thinking I want to do these two in my crease and then deepen it up with this one. So I'm going to start with this one in the front portion, blend it into the orange and deepen the orange up with the brown. I think that's going to be like a pretty decent idea. It might look kind of crazy, but we're going to try it. So I'm going to start with the shade called Joyous, which is this one right here. I'm going to start by just packing that in the front portion of my crease. That is beautiful. That is a really, really pretty color. I feel like I've been playing with pastels a lot lately, but I am not mad at it. I'm just gonna take this about halfway, maybe a little bit more than halfway across. I can tell that I do need to build this up a little bit more than maybe the Impressionist in palette, maybe more than I'm used to, but those palettes also don't have pastels in them, so that definitely could have something to do with it, but it is a beautiful color. It is looking very, very nice. Oh, I do have a code with Muse Beauty as well. I forgot to say that in the beginning of the video. It's just an at 10 and it will help you save 10% on your order. It is an affiliated code though. So if you don't want to support my channel, don't use my code. But if you do, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I'm also going to take some of this same shade underneath my eye here, just in the same spot that I have it on top. Yeah, this color is not sticking as well underneath my eye, obviously, as it did in my crease. I do feel like maybe this matte formula is a little bit different than what I'm used to from Muse Beauty, or maybe it's just that they're not as good at making pastels as they are uh, more saturated shades. It is building up though, it's not a bad shade, it's just I don't feel like it's necessarily the same formula because it's taking a little bit longer to just build up, but that's okay. Next up I'm gonna go into the shade here called, I'm going to butcher this, Allegory? Al allegory? <laughs> I really don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce that, but whatever. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the outer portion of my crease. And we're going to see how this shade is. Yeah, that is a lot more pigmented. That is beautiful. with it. This looks really nice with my hair. I'm just going to blend that gently into that purple. I don't want to over blend these per se. I just want to kind of merge them together a little bit here. But that is a really pretty color. I'm going to, of course, take this underneath my eye as well in the same spot. Man, I gotta admit, this is blending out like a dream. Like, I am barely touching the shadow and it basically blended itself. That looks really, really nice. Now, let's go ahead and deepen this up. I'm gonna take the dark brown and the palette, which is called Grass with an extra E. <laughs> Grass, eh? <laughs> and I'm just gonna put that in the outer corner of my eye hair. I don't think I want to take it through my crease. I'm just going to use this as my deepening shade. Again, this is blending out so nicely and is so easy to work with. I really like this shade. I love that Muse is pretty good at putting dark mattes in their palette so you can always deepen something up even though 
you know, the, the feel of the palette and the theme of the palette is more of a romantic soft palette, but you can definitely, you know, get something a little bit more intense by having a deepening shade. So I really appreciate that they put something like this in here because it makes it a lot more versatile, especially for someone like me who really likes to deepen up looks. So I think this is where I'm going to leave it with the crease. But like I was saying before, I don't really feel like I have a lot of lid options. Like I'm not sure most of these are really gonna go with the look. Like this shade is definitely gonna go with the look. I feel like these two are going to be my best bet. I mean, I could put something like this all over my lid, but that's not really my thing. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use this one in the middle of my lid and this one in the front portion and just sort of hope for the best. And then maybe I'll pull in some kind of a highlighter for the inner corner. I don't feel like there's really an inner corner shade that's gonna go with a lot of these mattes because this is a very cool tone, very light cool tone yellow and it's just not going to go with, I feel like a lot of these sort of purpley tones. I don't know, maybe that is just me. Yeah, I don't know, maybe it would, maybe it wouldn't, but I feel like with what I have going on right now, especially in the outer portion, it's more warm tone, so I don't really wanna pull in like a very cool tone highlighter. Uh, so let's go ahead and do, I'm gonna start with this one. This is the shade called Frivolity. Not going to use any glitter primer today because I've noticed with um, you say shimmers, it doesn't really make a big difference. I am going to spray it a little bit though, just to prevent any kind of fallout, but these aren't very intense shimmers compared to some other brands. They're just a very basic shimmer formula, which looks really, really nice on the lid, but it's not anything like super intense and it's not something that needs a glitter primer, especially for longevity. Like these last very, very nicely on me. I'm just gonna kind of blend that into the outer corner of my eye here, uh, but this is looking very, very nice. I honestly think that this palette is maybe better for someone who mostly likes neutrals, but likes a pop of color because a lot of the looks that you're gonna end up doing, especially with the lid shades, and I feel like with this shimmer formula, it's probably the kind of shimmer formula that a lot of people would just use as a one and done kind of color. I feel like it's a very nice formula for uh, especially blending out. So if you're someone who likes all shimmer looks, you would probably really like these shimmers. And then for the rest of my lid, I'm gonna take the shade called Royal, which is the uh, lavender shimmer. Just gonna take that on the same brush here. I am going to spray this a little bit as well, just so I can prevent any fall. Why do I have a hair on my brush? That's that's not going on my eye. Uh, let's see, what side of my brush is on this one? Just gonna put that in the front portion here and then I'll figure out what it is that I want to do in my inner corner I don't really feel like the yellow is gonna go with this So I might have to pull in some kind of a I don't know some kind of a lavender highlighter or something like that to sort of go with this Shade that I'm putting on right now. Just blending these two in together I'm taking a little bit more of this shade on a smaller brush and I'm just gonna pop that on the front portion of my lower lash line I felt like I sort of lost that matte a little bit. So I just want to bring in this color and with the shimmer, it's just going to be a lot easier to make it stick without an eyeshadow primer underneath. And I do also like having shimmer underneath my eye. I don't like it. I don't like having shimmers like on the outer portion of my lower lash line. Not sure why, but I really like it in the front portion. It just adds a little bit of extra sparkle. So I'm going to do this and then I'll finish off with my eyes. I'll come back and I'll show you what I did, what highlighter I used and stuff like that and we can talk a little bit more about this palette. And here is the final look. So let me tell you quickly what I did to finish off. I did some lavender in my waterline, which I don't think anyone is really surprised by. I still haven't done an inner corner highlight. I'll do that with you, but I just wanted to let you know what is on my face. So for my lipstick today, I'm using one that I was sent from, was it Yes Style a while ago? This is from a brand called Cute Press. It is a beautiful sort of terracotta-y orange and I felt like it would go very nicely with that outer corner shade. And also since my hair is orange, like orange is just very safe. So that is what I did. I also did just some liner and mascara on my top lid. I think for my highlighter today, I wanna use one of my Bitter Lace Beauty highlighters, or I guess I should say for my inner corner because I already have highlighter on. So I'm gonna take this one. This one is in the shade Whimsical. It is one of the Kaleidoscope Glow ones and it's a very light, uh, light, light, icy lavender highlighter. It's going to look beautiful. I'm gonna give this a little spray because it is quite glittery and I'm just gonna pop that in the inner corner and you'll see just how big of a difference having an inner corner highlight makes. I mean, look at that, that is beautiful. Yeah, see, I really feel like it completes the look compared to this side. Like this side is looking fine, but it's like something is missing and then you just put this in and you're like, ah, that's what was missing. So this is going to be the completed look. And I really like this look. I think it turned out very, very nicely. I will say that my only, 
I don't want to say complaint. It's more of a personal preference thing is that I feel like I feel like the shimmers don't really go with the mattes in this palette. And I don't know if that is just me. I would love to hear other people's opinions because it makes it so that it's a little bit harder to use unless you want to pair like bronzes with these very colorful shades. But I feel like if you're really into color, you maybe don't want to do, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Like I said, I'd love to hear other people's opinions about this color story because I personally find it a little bit limiting and tough to work with in the way that I do my makeup in that I like to do my crease shades and I like to do a shimmer on the lid. But that is, again, just personal preference. I know a lot of people like doing all matte looks. A lot of people like doing all shimmer looks. I like a mix of the two. And so I need my mattes to go with my shimmers. And I feel like I'm missing a little bit of just a little bit of something in this, but again, just personal preference. I think the formula is nice. I think that the mattes seem a little bit different than the Impressionism palette and the other palette that I have from them. Not really sure if that is just because of the colors in this that makes them a little bit different. I'm not really sure, but I still think that they perform well. They just take a little bit longer to work with. I mean, this orange shade was beautiful. The brown was beautiful. It was just the pastel that I used that I was a little bit like this is taking longer than normal, but like I said, it definitely built, it definitely did what I wanted it to do, and I'm very happy with the look that came out of it. Very happy with the cream blushes. Uh, obviously, I've only used one of them so far, but like I said, I do have a duo from before that I've used quite a bit and I really like, so this is definitely the same formula and I'm very happy to have more of them. So thank you so much Musee Beauty for sending over this beautiful collection. It's always fun to see what you guys come out with and I really like the art inspired uh, makeup products uh, in general. I think it's just super fun and unique and interesting and something that I feel like the market was missing. So that's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for watching as always. If you wanna see some more Musee Beauty content, I will put a playlist up on the screen and if you're new, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.